Welcome to lesson two on the Oxbridge Medical Interview. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at some general tips. First of all, talk through your thinking process. In the Oxbridge interview, they'll often put you in very uncomfortable situations, give you difficult scenarios and make you think outside the box. The aim is not to unsettle you, but instead is to see how you think. Often, they have no expectation for you to get the right answer, but instead they want to see your thinking process. So therefore, explain your reasoning, think out loud. Here's an example. How could the cancer drug Rituxan work? Well, I can hear you panicking already. If you get a question like this, don't panic. They don't expect you to know about Rituxan at all, but instead they want to see how you think. So here's a good answer. I don't know the drug specifically, but I know the main issue with cancer is growth of the tumour. So I would predict that rituxan would work by inhibiting division of tumour cells and potentially killing tumour cells. So do you see here how this student has never heard of rituxan and doesn't know much about cancer drugs, but he does know that cancer is caused by growth of a tumour. So therefore, He's put two and two together and made a prediction that it could work by killing tumour cells. And this is a great example of how you can use the knowledge that you do have and apply it and make speculations. Tip two, prepare for the academics. As we said before, the Oxbridge interview is much more academic than any other interview. So therefore, it's good to go through different common diseases and understand how they work. Also, go over your A-level content again. Here's an example. How does type 1 diabetes work? Diabetes occurs due to insufficient production of insulin in response to increased glucose. Type 1 is caused by autoimmune destruction of insulin-producing beta cells. This is a fairly common question. And as an A-level student studying biology, you should be able to answer to this level of detail. Three, questions will come in chains. So when you answer a question, they would likely ask a follow-up and keep going to see how much you know. For example, for the previous question, how does type one diabetes work? They could follow up by saying, good answer. How do you think the autoimmune response works? Okay, well how could a drug treating type 1 diabetes work? And so on. 4. You might have to analyse pictures or items. So at times they can give you an item, for example a bone or a picture, like a histology slide, and then they'll ask you to talk about it. Of course, when they give you a random bone from any animal, they don't expect you to know much about it. Again, they're looking at what you can see and what you can spot using logical thinking. Again, think out loud. So here's an example. Here's a bone. Which animal could it be from? Explain your thinking. So for this kind of scenario, you first of all want to talk about the size of the bone. Is it big or is it small? And that can help you identify what type of animal it could be. And then you could look at different features and they'll talk it through with you. It's more a discussion than a Q&A. Five, questions can be quite imaginative. The questions are designed to get you to think outside the box. So therefore, they can really put you into very uncomfortable and unsettling situations. Here are some example questions. If you were on a desert island, which three items would you like to have? Or if the world had no wind, what would happen? What is the population of London? For all of these, they might seem quite scary at first, but break them down and go through them logically. Six, they will grill you on books and projects. If you've mentioned a book, for example, in your personal statement, they'll ask you to talk about it in much more greater detail than in another interview. So for example, they might ask you about the book. You could talk for a good 30 to seconds to one minute, but then they'll ask follow-up questions. For example, explain to me 
the weakest argument in how doctors think, the book you mentioned in your personal statement. Or, you have done a research project on dementia. What is the tau protein? Thank you for watching this tutorial of the Oxbridge interview. Thank you for watching this free tutorial from Medic Mind. To unlock 100 tutorials on topics such as MMI, Oxbridge, NHS structure, work experience, personality and much more, click here now.